French President Emmanuel Macron spent three days with President Trump last week, while German Chancellor Angela Merkel got only three hours. Let's get insight into what's really going on and welcome the newly confirmed U.S. ambassador to Germany. I never thought I'd say that, Rick. Rick Grinnell from Los Angeles. <laughs> How you doing? I'd, I'd have a stein of beer to, tea, to toast you, but I guess I can't do that on national TV. How you doing? You feeling good? I'm feeling great. And uh, the, the most important part is today I am uh, four and a half years cancer free, coming up on five years. So I just oh, got that I, diagnosis today. I so saw that. I saw good. that tweet. You and I are thrivers, cancer thrivers. So I was so happy to see that. That's right. Rick and I have only known each other for 25 years. Full disclosure, shh, we shouldn't say how long, Rick, but a long time. <laughs> and and you, I was you, like seven, though. Yeah, you, you were, were like, much you were, older. yeah, you were basically in utero still. Uh, so let, let's talk about uh, a, a bunch of things. I want to talk about Merkel with with Trump, but I have to play something for you because I hadn't heard this at this soundbite until we were getting ready for our show. This was Menendez, Senator Menendez, before your confirmation vote. Let's watch. Mr. Grinnell's derogatory comments about women are simply unacceptable for anyone to make in public, let alone a diplomat. And I would go further. Not only do these tweets show bad judgment, they show us who Mr. Grinnell really is and how comfortable he is publicly contributing his own brand of toxic political discourse. Will he do such things if he's confirmed and goes to Germany? Will he insult via his Twitter account the female chancellor of Germany? I mean, Rick, Rick I've got to say, this was one among, with Bob Menendez's past, that was one of the most hilarious moments. That's how desperate the, because what you, you sent out a, you know, a snarky tweet uh, five years ago. I don't even know what it was about, but well, how did you react to that? Look, I, I haven't met Senator Menendez. I've never met him. Um, he doesn't know me. I have reached out to him since confirmation to ask for a meeting. I'd love to meet him. I'd love to talk to him about Germany. I'd love to have him see who I am and see um, that actually what he said on the floor is wrong. But um, I, I'm going to keep on and try to have that meeting. I, I think once people get to know me, they see that, that that's You're already cool. a diplomat. Like, look at you. You're so diplomatic. <laughs> Obviously, at the U.N., as, as uh, the, the uh, press uh, attache at the U.N. of the United States. But let, let's talk now about what happened last week with Merkel. For, for our viewers who aren't all that, you know, into the EU politics and where she is versus Macron, why, why did that seem a little bit uncomfortable? I said last week she looked like she had eaten some bad schnitzel, which is not diplomatic at all of me to say, but that's why I'm not an ambassador. Well, you know, I, ha I have there? to say... I have to say that watching um, Chancellor Merkel and President Trump negotiate, uh, they, they clearly like each other. They clearly know each other. But every American would be in incredibly proud to see how Donald Trump negotiates. I've spent years watching presidents and secretaries of state really talk uh, um, when they're in one-on-one -on -one meetings about moral arguments when it comes to foreign policy, what should be done. And we don't have just a pure moral argument from the president. We have multi-pronged arguments. And I've longed for the day to have a president who actually negotiates with all of America's strengths, our economic strengths, our agricultural strengths, our tariffs. All of the issues that we bring to the table need to be brought to the table in order to pressure the the relationship for a better, uh, you know, jobs record for for more jobs for Americans for trade that expands and and President Trump is really good at it and so I think what you saw uh, any American who would see them negotiate she looked uncomfortable would feel very to me. comfortable she looked uncomfortable I'm I mean sorry? it's okay that she she looked really uncomfortable to me I mean she did not look like Macron I think they're kind of slapping each other on the back but. Maybe she was just wanted to spend more time with them. I, I don't know. I, mean, I, I have to say, when, was... when they were negotiating together and they were yeah. they were uh, across the table, they were not uncomfortable. Okay, well, they, maybe they it was just... clearly have a great friendship, but they have some differences. Okay, well that's fine. Um, one thing that I find fun is to to read the so-called foreign policy experts in Europe about what they think about Trump because they don't understand him or they're concerned about him. This is the 12 German ex experts, an op-ed about Trump. This is from October, last year.
The liberal world order, with its foundation in multilateralism, its global norms and values, its open societies and markets, is in danger. Donald Trump is the first U.S. president since World War II to fundamentally question the ideas in institutions of the liberal international order. And Rick, I would say about that, yes, he is, and yes, he's right, because America needs to focus on keeping herself strong and helping our allies, but the multilateralism, you know, sometimes only goes so far. Well, I think, you know, when you look back and you see uh, candidate Donald Trump in the uh, election, he was very clear about uh, what taxpayers were getting and what they were tired of paying for because they don't always get the return that they expected. I mean, you look at uh, agencies, uh, multilateral agencies like the U.N. or NATO, and we have paid a significant amount. And I think it's a, it's a right question to say, are we getting enough? Is there enough U.S. leadership? And, and that's exactly what President Trump brought to the table with, with Angela Merkel. But I do have to say this, Laura. They, um, when it was all done, when we were all finished with the press conference, the president took the chancellor up to the residence with the vice president and myself and gave a personal tour of the vice president, of the, uh, the residence, the presidential residence at the White House. That was the first time that's nice. that the chancellor had been up there. It was shocking to hear that she had never been able to see the Lincoln bedroom, never I, been able yeah. to see the Gettysburg Address, and President Trump took her there. Yeah, well, you know, he, he wants to put on the charm offensive. He's really good at it. You know, we've told him the charm, charm works wonders. He is wonders. very good at it. Tough but charm. Rick Grinnell, congratulations. We'll, uh, we'll be talking to you Thanks, from Germany Laura. for sure, or in Germany.